Good morning. And what a difference 24 hours can make. Yeah, 24 hours ago right now, it was pouring. I didn't realize it was so heavy. I think we had something like uh, 30 millimeters of rain in about an hour. I, I didn't realize it until I read the news later on. And we actually had flooding in certain parts of Winnipeg here. Not serious flooding, but just 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 annoying flooding, you know, like uh, uh, underpasses and that sort of stuff. Uh, I didn't have a problem here at my house, but uh, I guess I could have because it, it was sure coming down. Anyway, what do we got going on here? Well, I've got the first coat on on everything, and I've got two coats on the bottom half of our tripod. Um, and uh, I, I did get the uh, little guns put together last night. It was one of the last things I did. Now, I know it's going to go out of focus here. Uh, we'll put them on the rotator and take a quick look. I do not think that I'm going to be putting two coats, a, a second coat, uh, on the guns because uh, I'm using the 56 here and uh, it, it's, uh, it goes on pretty good by brush. I'm, I'm not you know, uh, completely unhappy with it, but I, th I think I'm going to probably plug up the detail if I try to put on a second coat, and it's really not going to change it that much. I mean, these things are so small that you, you, you're going to hardly be able to see them anyway unless you just come right in and, you know, look at them up close with a magnifying glass or something, and, and most of this is going to be uh, looked at, you know, using the arm's length rule, you know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, I, I, uh, I, in the rollback that we're going to run, if I ever get stopped talking here, uh, you'll see where I painted this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put the the second, do the second coat on camera. I'm just going to get it done. I'm imagining it's going to take me a couple of hours this morning. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's just sort of roll back and see how it is we got to this place. Okay, I'm going to try and get some painting down here this afternoon. And uh, as you recall from the end of yesterday's episode, I you know, said we can't glue this down until everything is painted. So what I'm going to do is I'm already obligated to paint the, the sides of the superstructure like the, the bulkheads, the number 66, so it'll match everything else. And I was trying to decide, am I going to be painting the inside of the splinter walls here a different color than the deck? And I thought, well, why don't I check the uh, paint and marking guide from the Rodney? And when we look down on it, and this entire piece right here, is actually only this piece right here, just just a small piece. And uh, do I have it the right way around? Yeah, I think I do. Anyway, uh, yeah, but there there is going to be pieces going on here, um, like like the uh, the uh, tripod goes right here. And then some other stuff. But we've already got the, the deck painted, the right color. Now, what I was going to do was, when I thought that maybe I would be painting the deck a lighter gray, I thought, well, what I'll do is I will paint the inside of the splinter walls, the, the 77, the darker gray first. Because it's been my experience that if I've got, if I'm painting a deck and a splinter wall, two different shades, it, I, I, when I make a mistake and bleed one over onto the other, it's always less noticeable if you paint your deck last and it bleeds up the splinter wall just a little bit. Whereas if you paint the splinter wall last and it bleeds over onto the deck, for some reason you seem to be able to see that a lot better. Maybe because the light is shining down on it and it's more visible. I, I don't know. Not It's not necessarily at the angle you're looking because 
you, you could be looking at a 45 degree angle and each one would be, you'd see each one equally, but anyway, uh, as it turns out, I'm going to be painting the deck and the inside of the splitter wall, the 77, the darker gray. And it will look pretty much like this from the top. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I haven't decided yet, should I try and mask this off somehow here? Um, or am I just going to very carefully just try and go along with the brush? Maybe I'll see if I can put a little bit of masking tape there. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, th this part right here is, is going to come come over a little bit on onto the deck. So uh, I, I don't need to worry too much where, where that goes. But there's about uh, three centimeters here from here to here and from here to here that maybe I should... Yeah, how hard is it to put down a little bit of the Tamiya masking tape? Okay, now just because I've got masking tape on here doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to just sop it on. For a minute there, I forgot which direction I was going. Okay. So, so this edge right here, it's right along the end of the planking. And when I brush, I'm going to want to brush this way, not this way. Otherwise, I'm going to be shoving the liquid up underneath the tape and it'll bleed into the planking. I think that's going to be okay. Now I had been thinking that these guns here went here and and they still might but obviously something has to go on top of this then if that's the case. And uh, be careful where I pick it up. Um, now you'll, you'll notice along the the inside here is brown. I've got to paint that the number 77. And also then, around the outside of this, I don't think it's a barbette so much as it's just a gun base. I don't think any parts of the gun actually went down below the deck. I think it would, it would obviously there was storage of some kind here, I would think. Um, but it's not really what you would call a barbette. But I, I'm going to have to paint this very carefully this the 77 and uh, trying not to get it onto the deck yeah I, I guess I should have thought a little bit ahead there because uh, you know if you if it's easier to paint the deck last then this should have been painted first but you know that's the way it goes that's what makes this hobby you know interesting okay curiosity got the best of me and I was wondering what what is it that does go there and a part called K2 goes on there so let's just for the fun of it grab the K2 and pl and just sort of place it temporarily on there and see how much of this is going to be visible anyway and maybe I don't need to get myself all tied in a knot here about you know trying to not get the paint on the deck might not be seen anyway Okay, this is kind of good news in a way, and this is actually the first time I'm trying this on here. Alright, if we put this on, like that, then something is supposed to go down there. Then, one of these pieces goes in here like this. I guess there's a reason why they made it like that. And then, our gun will plug in like that. Okay. So, uh, in other words, a lot of this is going to be covered up. So if I accidentally, when I'm painting, get it down onto the deck, in all likelihood, this everything that's above this is going to be so busy that you're not going to notice the fact that, uh, yeah. I'm just about ready to start painting our deck here. I'm going to leave the uh, outside of the superstructure to last because I'll be wanting to hang on to this piece by touching the outside of the superstructure. 
And but I was wondering what what is it that goes here? And I was thinking was it one of the smaller turrets? So I, I checked ahead in the in the manual, and uh, if I could stop dropping it, th these actually go right here. So. Uh, Yeah, they they fit on there. Not real well. Well, I, yeah, I guess I guess they probably will. Um, so, in other words, how how much of this do I have to paint? And it it looks to me like, in all likelihood, I'll be painting right up to, but not this this very top pinion, if you could call that a pinion. This has uh, been shaken in the paint shaker a few minutes ago quite thoroughly and uh, it's been thinned probably with the uh, Tamiya thinner and the X stands for as best I remember the paint retarder. This is from when we were doing the airbrushing and, we, and uh, I don't have a whole lot of 77. I believe I have one more that that might be brand new but I'm not sure. Okay so we got this mess going on here. I know that if I can keep everything directly over that, it's going to be more or less in the field of view. Now this this entire piece has to get painted except for an area like this and the triangular shaped area right here. Now also these these don't have to be painted, I'm pretty sure. So I'll just, I'll just sort of paint around them. This, this piece should go fairly easy, I would think. Okay. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just try and put it on reasonably thin. I know I'm using a, a fairly large brush here, but uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be giving it two coats. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I understand that you can't really see that edge too well, but that, that's all right. The main thing is I can see it. Sometimes trying to do something like this is on camera is uh, not relaxing. <laughs> what do I do on the tops here? Now the, the sides of the superstructure, like right here, is going to be the 66. likelihood detail is going to be going in here and uh, we're not even going to see back in here something something's going to get plugged in there another thing I want to make sure that I don't do is is uh, fill up the holes where, where the mushroom vents have to go there's a ton of mushroom vents have to go on this thing I know this looks really, really blotchy, but uh, like I say, this is the, this is just the first coat.
there's probably something that I've forgotten to do that's important here. And uh, I'm sure that I'm going to be getting a comment and somebody's going to remind me what I forgot to do and that's okay. I know in yesterday's episode I was, or was it, yeah, in yesterday's episode I was pretending that I was telling the viewer to shut up for telling me for putting the, the glue on too thick. I, I was kidding around, hope you know that. just flew into my window. I don't know if you heard that. Happens a lot since I got my new windows. About two, two years ago I got all new windows in, in the house and uh, something about those windows that the bird thinks that you can fly right through them or something. places that might be a little bit on the thin side but uh, the second coat will take care of that now I think this uh, other piece here now we still are recording this other piece here maybe what I'll do is I'll just do a little bit right right here where the masking tape is and <clears throat> then I'm going to just continue on and do the rest off camera here no, this is the one where we want to remember to go this way. Okay, this, this particular piece here, I'm going to be wanting to turn it this way and that way and every other way. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and, and, and do the rest of this off camera and we'll take a look at it when I'm done. Probably about half an hour now since I uh, put this first coat on. And uh, it's uh, basically dry. I can see in some of the corners where it's a little bit, little bit wet. Um, no. We're going to have to uh, very carefully paint the upper part of this with the 66. Not much difference between the 66 and the 77. Um, but there is a difference. Now, <clears throat> once again, I'm, I'm probably going to be best off trying to do this off camera there'd be less chance of me bending something badly out of shape or breaking it off. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that. And uh, I, I know I said we'd put this on the uh, rotator and look at it, but it's, it's not completely dry. So yeah, we'll just put it off to the side here very carefully. I know it didn't sound carefully, but it was. Um, Okay, so I've got to very gently get in here, paint paint this. Now this this little guy here, this is the one that I got to be careful not to break off. Now it's still got that little uh, piece of plastic on it. I haven't nipped that off yet. Uh, I, I don't know what to do about that. It it might even though it's not supposed to be there, it might actually be handy to fasten some easy line on. I don't know. I could maybe get a knot around it and you know go from from wherever they're supposed to go down to. Maybe it's supposed to go from here to here, 
but then maybe there was something that went from here up to here. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm just going to push stop here and uh, go ahead and, and, and get at this and be very careful I don't break anything off if I can. Okay, everything has its first coat on it now. And these little guns, I put them together and gave them one coat. I don't think I'm going to give them a second coat. Um, one, one of these little guns, I think it's this one here, the uh, gun sight is in the folded position. We'll call it the folded position. Actually, I broke it off and sort of glued it in place. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like it's in its folded position. Uh, anyway, we're... Uh, um, I know I said we'd put these on the rotator and spin them around, but we're going to have to do that in the morning. So, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And there's been another change in plans here. I know I have at least two times before said we'll put these on the rotator and have a close look. But probably about, oh, an hour or so ago, they came by with a little machine that digs the trench and buries the cable uh, to the, around to the back of my house. And <laughs> being a nice sunny day, and being as they gave me permission, uh, I was out there with my camera, and I thought you'd sort of like to see that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, takes the digs a trench and buries the cable all in one operation. Now, I've seen those machines before. Uh, anyway... Um, yeah, let's, let's just sort of watch that, and maybe in tomorrow's episode, after I get the second coat on the sides here, I did get the second coat on the, on the deck, it's drying right now, it still looks pretty blotchy. Oh, we'll, we'll change, let's put this one on. This is the one that has the, uh, gun sight that got folded, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess I got a little bit uh, over exuberant and bent it back and forth one too many times. But yeah, it's all right, you know, unless you look really, really close. Right now you're seeing it probably about as close as most people that would put their nose right up against the glass would see it. Anyway, let's let's go outside and uh, we'll see we'll see what happened. Uh, probably I'm guessing about an hour ago right now. Now, as you're going to see here, I have become just a mere shadow of my former self. Well, I wish anyway. Now he gave me a sample of the fiber optic line that he's burying. 
Now we don't have time today, but tomorrow, all being well, we'll cut it open and see what's in the inside. Well, I kind of already know, but it might be kind of fun. We'll put on the macro lens. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.